Hello everyone. We are now on the next chapter on continuous random variables and probability distributions. Continuous probability models are another major class of probability models. In the previous chapter we saw uh, uh, models for discrete random variables. With discrete random variables there was either a finite number of possible numbers this random variable could take or it was countably infinite. For example, the whole numbers uh, were, were possible. In this situation, uh, not only are the number of possibilities infinite, they are uncountably infinite. So this, these uh, probability models allow for any real number within some range. It could be within a range A to B or Z, like uh, A to infinity or zero to infinity or negative infinity to infinity, so any real number, any of those could be possibly taken by the random variable. So, as a consequence of this, we're going to change some of the notions that we had with discrete random variables, but uh, not by much. For example, the probability mass function is going to be replaced with the probability density function, which is what we're going to be talking about right now. And the CDF is still defined the same way, but it's going to be computed a little bit differently. Instead of it being involving a sum, it's going to involve an integral, and expectations are also going to involve integrals. Basically, whenever you would add numbers with discrete random variables, you integrate with continuous random variables. So this is where your calculus knowledge is going to be uh, tested. One nice thing, though, about uh, continuous random variables, though, is that when you're working with continuous random variables, uh, the probability that, the, that that random variable is equal to any particular number is always zero, which is the reason why we have to have uh, integration and density functions. So the probability that x is less than x is the probability that x is less than or equal to x. And admittedly, it is a little strange that the probability that this random variable is equal to a particular number is zero. It's it's somewhat strange because when you go to your random number generator and ask this thing to produce a number, it gives you a number. But the probability that you got that number was zero. So events that are happening with probability zero are happening all the time whenever you're working with continuous random variables. But the way Feroz uh one of my probability instructors, researcher at the University of Utah, very good mathematician. Uh, one way he put it was uh, the, you know at some level that someone's going to win the lottery. You just know it's not going to be you. So you get the probability that you win the lottery is zero. And the probability that anyone lives, wins the lottery is not zero. That's the way he put it. So, uh, let's uh, move on to discussing probability density functions. So these are the analog to the probability mass function for discrete random variables. The PDF is a non-negative function, which I'm calling f of x, such that for any two numbers a and b, with a less than or equal to b, the probability that a is less than or equal to x, which is our random variable, which is less than or equal to b, is equal to the integral from a to b f of x dx. Naturally, in order for f to be a valid PDF, we must also have that the integral from, a, no, not a, uh, the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of x dx. Well, that's the probability that this random variable is between negative infinity and infinity. And that's basically asking for what is the probability that this random variable is any real number. We're basically asking what is the probability that x is a real number. So naturally this must equal 1 because we know that x will be a random, a, a real number. And it will be finite. So this is another relation we have to have. Now regarding this, f itself might not be 
uh, continuous everywhere. And it's also possible that actually integrating from negative infinity to infinity is a, is, uh, uh, a bit much because actually this random variable is only positive on some uh, on some uh, interval of finite length and everywhere else it's zero so you're integrating for the most part zero and in fact we'll see one example of this uh, let's confirm that the function which we'll call f of x um, Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think this is on the next page. Oh, it is. It's already on the next page. What am I doing writing this down? So confirm that the PDF given here, uh, which I've uh, uh, circled in blue, that this is in fact a valid PDF. Plot it. Uh, we're going to have, we're going to say that a random variable with this PDF uh, that, fo that follows this distribution is said to follow the uniform distribution denoted by u following a uniform distribution between a and b. Okay, so uh, let's confirm that this is in fact a probably a valid probably density function. Well, actually, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit and, set, and uh, just plot it. Uh, let's su suppose that this is the endpoint a and this is the endpoint b. Uh, the, this density function is gonna be constant on some interval uh, that has height 1 over b minus a. Uh, so let's see, let's uh, draw that a little better. So this corresponds to 1 over b minus a. All right. So that's the only spot where it's positive. Everywhere else, it's 0. So uh, we need to confirm that this is in fact valid because, and to do that, we need to show that the area underneath the curve is one uh, or that when we integrate from negative infinity to infinity, uh, f of x a b with respect to x, we should get one. Well, how are we going to handle the fact that this is a piecewise function and that uh, we have actually three regions on which this thing takes three different num uh, no, two different numbers. Well, you are allowed to break up integrals. So we could integrate from negative infinity to zero. Uh, no, not zero. Uh, a. F of x. A, B. Dx. And then we can integrate from A to B f of x a b dx and then we can integrate from b to infinity f of x a b dx and according to our uh, integral formula our our um our pdf's formula which is a piecewise function on this region, the function is equal to zero. On this region, from b to infinity, the function is equal to zero, which means that both of those integrals are going to equal zero because you're just integrating zero. And all that's left that could potentially be positive is uh, this region right here on which the PDF is going to be one over b minus a. So we end up needing to integrate uh, we, we end up needing to integrate uh, 1 over b minus a with respect to x on the interval a to b. Which, all right, let's go ahead and do this the hard way, the calculus way, and then I'm going to explain it, and then, then I'm going to suggest something easier in a second. Uh, or not necessarily easier, but just, just different. Okay? Uh, more... Like if you if you took geometry, you'd understand it. Let's put it that way. All right. So um, the antiderivative of this is going to be x over b minus a, and we're going to evaluate this uh, from x equals a to x equals b. 
which is equal to b minus a over b minus a, which is equal to 1. All right, which is what we needed. Or we could have just said, said this. We are looking for the area underneath the within the box that has width b minus a and has height 1 over b minus a. How do you find the area of a rectangle? You multiply its width by its height. So you multiply b minus a with 1 over b minus a, and that's going to multiply 1. So you could, you could have just used geometry. Remember, what integrals are doing is computing the area underneath a curve uh, within, within, within some boundaries, right? So, or the area between the curve and the x-axis. That's what integrals do, right? So uh, going up a little bit, uh, we have that uh, a to b f of x dx is, is uh, visually understood as if this is our function uh, f. So we got f of x. Here's a, here's b. What this is doing it's, is it's computing the area between the curve and the x-axis which sometimes I also say as beneath the curve. And it's fair for me to say beneath the curve in this context because the function that we're generally integrating is uh, is a uh, non-negative. So I'm saying I, I, I drew a picture that has a negative part, but in the context of PDFs, we're actually integrating something that is uh, non-negative. So uh, that would be, no, I don't want blue. That would be something that looks like this. We got A, we got B, and we've got something like that. And we're finding the area underneath the curve. Remember that that is what integrals are basically doing. So thinking about stuff as being areas beneath curves when working in this context is very handy. Uh, so um, yeah, so let's uh, next confirm that the function f of x with parameter mu which is equal to one over mu e negative one over mu x, where x is greater than or equal to zero, that this is in fact a valid PDF. And then we'll plot the PDF. A random variable x following this distribution is set to follow the exponential distribution, uh, which is denoted uh, like so. Although here what I'm doing is I'm denoting the exponential distribution in terms of its mean. Actually, there are different notations for the exponential distribution. Sometimes we uh, parameterize the exponential, exponential distribution in terms of its mean. Sometimes it's parameterized in terms of its rate parameter, which is 1 divided by the mean. Why? Uh, no, no particular reason. Like some, some prefer one way and some prefer the other way. I would say that since this is a statistics class, and st statisticians care a great deal about... Uh, the mean of things, it's natural in a statistics class to parameterize the exponential distribution by its mean. On the other hand, uh, I would say that probabilists like the rate parameter because probabilists probably care more about Poisson processes, in which case the rate parameter seems more natural, and uh, probabilists also... Uh, they just like to keep the mathematics simpler. And if you're parameterizing in terms of the rate, which I'm going to call ramda, lambda, uh, then the you would replace this part up here with lambda e negative lambda x, which is a little bit easier. That's a little bit nicer than the one over mu business. Uh, but all right, let's we're just going to leave that notational issue aside. It does mean though that whenever you see the exponential distribution in the wild you should probably ask how exactly it's being parameterized. Now, of course, if what if the parameter is 1, then you don't care because then the rate is equal to the mean, which is equal to 1. Uh, but it's something to think about. All right, so I want to show that uh, when we integrate the PDF from negative infinity to infinity, of, and we're working with the PDF, that this needs to integrate to one, all right? And I'm going to, again, be uh, super explicit and say that this is an integral from negative infinity to zero, f of x 
mu dx plus an integral from 0 to infinity f of x parameterized by mu dx and that's basically just accounting for the piecewise nature of what we're integrating but on this region the pdf is going to be 0 so this is 0 and thus this entire integral is 0 right so in the end what we end up integrating is uh, 0 to infinity uh, we'll put the 1 over mu on the outside because that's a constant e negative 1 over mu x dx and I'm thinking this is probably going to be the last time when showing that a PDF integrates to 1 that I am so explicit about um, what's happening to certain parts and that we can break up this integral to account for the piecewise nature of the function and so on. Basically, I, I don't want to do this every single time I need to show that a PDF integrates to one or even when I'm just integrating a PDF because I know and it's not hard to reason that that part's just going to be zero and this is the part that only matters. Uh, no, why am I scribbling th that out? This is the only part that actually matters. It's not too hard to figure that out. All right. So, um, okay, so the recall that the antiderivative of e to the power a x is, uh, is going to be 1 over a e to the power a x. That's the antiderivative. So this will become... Uh, 1 over mu, and then we have uh, negative mu e negative uh, 1 over mu x. And this ranges from uh, x equals 0 to x equals uh, infinity. All right. This is where I assume that you know how to deal with integrals with infinite endpoints. Because one of the prerequisites for this class is calculus 2. So I'm going to assume that you know what to do when you have an infinite uh, endpoint here. Actually, you know what? I'm just not going to. I'm going to say instead uh, that this is, just, to be, just to, as a reminder, that this is the limit... As B approaches infinity, but this is going to be the last time I do this because we end up integrating stuff with infinite endpoints a lot. Uh, 1 over mu, uh, negative mu E, negative 1 over mu X. Uh, from X equals 0 to X equals B. We're treating B now as a non-infinite number. And saying that this is equal to the limit as b approaches infinity, uh, 1 over mu. And then we would have uh, negative mu e, negative uh, 1 over mu b. And when we plug in, uh, that looks like an alpha. We'll make that look more like an x. All right. When we plug in x equals 0 for the other side, we would have e to the power 0, which becomes 1, and then a minus mu. But remember that we're subtracting. So we would have negative, negative mu, which is plus mu. So we'll have uh, plus mu. And then the question becomes, how do we deal with this limit? Uh, the part in red is the only part that where the limit actually matters. So we need to figure out what the limit of that is. And it's the limit basically, oops. This is basically the limit as b approaches infinity of e to the power negative b, which hopefully you remember that from some of your previous classes. But one way you can think about it is let's look at the uh, exponential function 
We're basically making, we're seeing what this exponential function approaches as it gets very, very small. So as you're approaching negative infinity. So what does it approach? Well, it approaches zero. So that limit is equal to zero, which means that this part that I have boxed in red is approaching zero. And hence, this integral that we are computing is going to equal uh, 1 over mu times, well, the only part that's left that didn't go to 0 is mu. So we get 1 over mu times mu, which is equal to 1. Which is what we need to what which is what we needed to show. Okay, so from this point on, I often will say plug in negative infinity or plug in infinity into a function. And when I say that, I'm meaning do that limit. And for me, when I plug in, so e to the negative infinity is just equal to zero. I'm generally thinking of it that way, but that is literally what I mean. That is rigorless, rigorously what I mean. I'm talking about a limit as b becomes very, very small as b approaches negative infinity. So that is what I mean by plug in negative infinity. Okay. Uh, so I'm not always going to be uh, working with those limits at so explicitly. I'm often going to uh, just just uh, plug in negative infinity because I know what happens when I do. Uh, so if you are not all that familiar with that, this is a good time to get re-familiar with it and get re-familiar with your calculus too. All right, so um, I did say that I want a plot of the PDF. So that PDF, let's see, let's have a very good look at it. We know that for x less than zero, it's going to be zero. So if that's the part that I'm effectively going to ignore. Uh, I suppose that in my plot, I should probably... Uh, like uh, indicate that it's at zero. So otherwise, if I were to plug in zero, I would get one over mu for for the value of f of x at zero. So this thing starts at one over mu, and then it's going to decay exponentially fast. It's going, it's going to zero exponentially fast. Something's going wrong with my pen. Okay. All right. So it's going to zero exponentially uh, fast. So it's asymptoting to zero. Because what you're basically looking at in this uh, little thumbnail that I have up here is the, is the half of the exponential function where it's less than zero. That's effectively what you're looking at. So this will be the resulting... Uh, plot of the exponential function. Uh, so here we go. So here are some uh, uh, here's some R code that's basically doing what I asked you to do. So for instance, here is some R code that plots the uh, curve of the discrete uniform when uh, no, not discrete uniform, now just the uniform uh, distribution uh, with uh, parameters 0 and 1. So this is what we're plotting and we can use the curve function to do this. We give it in this case, the PDF of the uniform distribution. And I'm going to say plot it between negative one and two. And we do end up with this line where, which occurs around the jumps, but it's fine. Uh, we still get basically get the general idea of what this thing looks like. So it's zero, except it's going to be one on an interval and, and so on. So this is a function that you can use for, uh, creating plots of mathematical function, this uh, curve function. There's also a function called integrate that R comes with. Integrate performs numerical integration. So I'm going to say integrate the discrete uniform distribution from negative 1 to 2. And in doing so, this thing's actually supported, or this thing is actually positive uh, on the interval 0 to 1, but I'm integrating a little bit outside just because I can. And just because I can't plug in negative infinity and infinity, well, actually, no, I can. I am allowed to do that in R. And in fact, I do do that a little later. Uh, but I don't. All right. And we know that it's zero from negative infinity to infinity. Uh, 
this is good the region between negative one and two is the only region where it ever is, becomes positive so this is perfectly fine and it does in fact integrate it and it uh, comes up with a number and it says that this is going to be one all right let's next do uh the exponential distribution with rate parameter one which is the same as the mean parameter but it is worth mentioning that in r r parameterizes the exponential distribution using the rate parameter all right so by default the rate parameter is one and i create a plot of the exponential distribution with parameter one uh, starting at negative one and uh, ending at five so uh, we end up with a plot that looks like this we can see the exponential decay and the exponential distribution you do have that jump but the jump is fine uh, we'll, we'll live with it. It comes up with a decent looking plot and we can integrate this too. We are allowed to integrate and we do have an infinite endpoint for the integral. So I was lying before when I said we couldn't integrate from negative infinity to infinity. Apparently we can. Um, so I integrate the density function from zero to infinity and it is one uh, with uh, some error. Uh, so it, okay. So it's off up to five decimal places that's how you would that's how you would read this so it is numerical integration which means it's not going to be precise so that's something to keep in mind but it's basically saying this thing looks like it's going to be one with some error and i think it is probably possible to control the size of the error of the numerical integral Okay, uh, next example. Accidents along a certain stretch of road are presumed to occur a distance of X miles from the nearest city center, where X follows a uniform distribution with parameters 100 and 150. So accidents are happening within 100 and 150, uh, and they're uniformly distributed across the stretch of road. Uh, so, and of course, like ac accidents do happen before 100 miles and after the 150 mile post. They do, but uh, we're just uh, saying, okay, when they do happen between these two mile posts, what is the distribution? And we're saying that distribution is uh, a uniform distribution. In some sense, what we've done is we've uh, conditioned on the fact that we are looking at accidents within these mile posts. All right. So let's first compute the probability that 110 is, is less than or equal to X, which is less than or equal to 130. Here, graphically, is what we are trying to get. We have mile post 110, uh, no, mile post 100. We have one mile post 100 and mile post 150. And the, the uh, uniform distribution is just gonna be flat between those two mile posts, okay? And we have mile post 110, mile post 130. The probability is going to be the area underneath this curve between those two mile posts. So it's going to be the shaded area. So one way we could compute this probability is by computing the, uh, the area of this part. Uh, the, so the height of this distribution is going to be 1 over 50. Why? Well, that's the one way to reason about it is... This rectangle is 50 units long, so in order for it to be a valid probability density function, its height needs to be 1 over 50, uh, so that its total area is going to be 1. Uh, or you could use the uh, formula that you saw before, what we were working with before, which was in terms of B and A. A is going to be 100, B is going to be 150, so 1 divided by 150 minus 100 is 50. It is one over 50 my, my, my apologies so uh, that's another way to reason why it's one over 50 uh, let's go ahead and just use the geometry the width of this part this part is uh, 30 units long so the probability that 110 is less than or equal to x which is less than or equal to 130 is going to be 30 uh, divided by 50 which is three-fifths which is equal to 0 0.6 but let's also go ahead and see the the calculus way to do it which is a bit it looks more complicated but at the same time it's what you do in general 
Uh, so this probability is also equal to the integral from 110 to 130, 1 over 50 uh, dx, which is equal to x over 50 from x equals 110 to x equals 130, which is going to be 130. Oh, I'm sorry. I was I was mistaken. This is 20. Uh, yeah, I do make mistakes. I certainly do. I certainly do. You may have noticed in other videos that I made mistakes that I didn't catch. I once heard someone say, I don't know how accurate this is, that humans make like, f on average, five mistakes an hour. Uh, so I don't know if that's actually true, but it, 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 it provides a good excuse. So 130 minus 110 divided by 50, which is going to be 20 over 50, which is what we had up here. So we get to go back to that old reasoning. All right, uh, next probability. 127 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 144. Basically, the only thing that would possibly be different for this problem is I have less than instead of less than or equal to, but... We're working with continuous random variables now. We don't care anymore. Why? Well, the probability, let, let, let's reason by how we define probabilities in this context. Uh, the probability that X is equal to C is equal to the probability that C is less than or equal to X, which is less than or equal to C, right? Because that's the same thing as saying that X is equal to C. It's either less than or equal to C or greater than or equal to C, in which case it is C. All right, so this is going to be an integral from C to C, from C to C of f of x dx, which is equal to, well, um, let's uh, say that this thing is in fact integrable, so we could have the antiderivative at C minus the antiderivative at C, which is equal to zero. Or you can think of it as here is our PDF and we're looking for the area in this sliver. What is the area in that sliver? It has no area because it has no width. So it's area is zero. So yeah, the probability that these things are equal to a number is zero when we define probabilities to be this way. All right, so, okay. So uh, we don't care about the fact that we have less than instead of less than or equal to. And throughout this chapter, we're never going to care. We will never care about less than or less than or equal to or greater than or greater than or equal to. We just don't care about what it, what it does at the boundary. So this will still be the integral from 127 to 144 of uh, 1 over 50 dx. Which again, you can reason about this about using just geometry. We have 100 on this point, 150 on this point. We know the height of this thing is 50, uh, 1 over 50, my apologies. And we've got uh, 127 and 144. And we just need the area underneath the curve within, the, the, these, within this region. Uh, the, the length of this region is 17. So this is going to be uh, 17 over 50, which is equal to 0.34. All right, just using geometry, basically. Uh, the probability that x is greater than 148, which is the integral from 148 to infinity of f of x parameterized by 100 and 150 dx and the upper endpoint of the interval on which this PDF is positive is 150. So this is going to be the integral from 148 to 150 uh, uh, and on this interval the PDF is going to be 1 over 50 and everywhere else it's zero so we're not even going to bother to write the rest. Right? But also visually I like 
doing stuff visually, especially when we're working with continuous random variables. Drawing pictures for continuous random variables, I would say, is a good idea. So we've got 100, 150. Uh, we're asking about what is the probability that our random variable ends up in this region, uh, where that region starts out at 148, which is going to be the area underneath the curve to the right of 148. Which, the only part that has any volume is going to be the part between 140 and 150. Everywhere else, the area is zero. So it's going to be, uh, in the end, the length of that region is 2, 150 minus 148. So it's going to be 2 over 50, which is equal to 0 0.04. All right. Here's some R code that's doing a similar thing. But we're using the integrate function. So integrate the discrete, uh, not discrete uniform. Integrate the uniform, the density function of the uniform distribution between 110 and 130. Here we're giving parameters that will be passed to dunif. So these are not parameters of the integrate function. These are parameters of dunif. Because some functions in R have actually, um, uh, they allow for an arbitrary number of arguments to be passed to them. And uh, often with such functions, and you would see in their uh, uh, function declaration, like for example, f is going to be a function. It might have some uh, parameters of its own, like it might have a parameter a, but then you would see dot, dot, dot. And dot 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 means additional parameters that it doesn't that we are not actually saying on our own. So what's actually happening is in this case for the integrate function, uh, it does have like the dot 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 in its declaration. And I think what it tries to do is when it encounters arguments that it doesn't know, it assumes that those are arguments of the function that you're passing to it. So in this case, min and max are not parameters of integrate but they're treated as parameters of dunif. And they are, in fact, parameters of dunif. These are parameters of dunif. So we're saying that the minimum parameter for the discrete uniform is 100 and the maximum is 150. And it gets us the, uh, the uh, integral that we want. So it successfully de determines that this integrates to 0 0.4, which is correct. For the other integral, it correctly gets 0.34 and for 148 to infinity it is able to handle that although we do get more numerical error uh, so it says there's an error that does not exceed 0 0.00011 which is a fairly sizable error that's something that you would want to pay attention to uh, again it, it should be possible to control the size of the error I, it probably has its own default approach like this error is up to 15 decimal places away from uh from from the from the ones place and which in which case we really don't care about error that small but this would be a sizable error and i think it's a consequence of having this infinity up here uh and in fact you do kind of see oh that that really should not be a three uh we should like the the actual answer is 0 0.04 so it's somewhat noticeable, but yeah, it's fine. So next example, the time in minutes taken by a worker at the tuition and financial aid office of a certain university to service a student follows an exponential distribution with T, um, uh, with a distribution. It's an exponential distribution with parameter 10, which can be interpreted as the mean time to service a student is 10 minutes. So compute the probability that T is less than 20. Uh, literally what we're doing, if uh, visually, uh, let's go ahead and extend this a little bit off to the left of zero, is we are computing the area underneath the discrete uniform. Uh, I keep saying that. Underneath the exponential distribution, uh, it goes up to 20. Or we're looking at the area underneath that curve uh, to the left and extending all the way to negative infinity. It's just that the area to the left of zero is going to be zero. So we don't actually care about it. In the end, this integral will be the integral from, uh, well, okay, I'll write negative infinity to 20 to start. f of x 
mu dx, but then recognize the fact that the only part where it's positive is the, the part between 0 and 20, and say this is, uh, so the PDF for this is going to be uh, 1 over 10 e negative x over 10 for x greater than or equal to 0. Yeah, that's not a 0. Uh, so this is greater than or equal to 0. OK. Uh, and my x looks like an alpha. I keep, that's just a consequence of how I write x's and how they show up on computer screens. All right. So um, I also did have a, someone ask me right I, why I wrote a chi. It's not a chi. Uh, this is how I write my chi's. I make them much longer. And they generally are extending below the line. Like, for example, if I actually wanted to write a chi here, I'd write it probably like that. Um, maybe not quite that long, but it would be very clear that it's not an X. All right. Anyway. Um, so we've got uh, 1 over 10, E negative X over 10. Uh, no, DX, which is equal to uh, the antiderivative of that is going to be uh, e negative x over 10. And this is going to range from x equals 0. Well, actually, there's only one variable now. So this will be uh, ranging from 0 to 20, which is e negative. Oh, right. We also have a negative out here which is negative e negative 2 uh, plus 1. Or uh, another way to write that is 1 minus e negative 20. No, not e negative 20, e negative 2. There we go. And that's the probability. That's the answer. All right, next example. The probability that t is between 6 and 9 and this is less than, but not less than or equal to, and I don't care because we're dealing with continuous stuff. Uh, here's a sketch of the probability that we're computing. Uh, here's six, here's nine, and we want the area underneath the density function between those two. So this is going to be the integral from six to nine, uh, one over 10, e negative x over 10, dx, which is equal to, um, uh, it's equal to uh, negative e negative x over 10, ranging from uh, 6 to 9, which is going to equal e negative 0 0.6 minus e negative 0 0.9. All right, next, uh, next part. The probability that t is greater than or equal to 22. We have a couple ways to do this. Uh, one way is directly, and just say that this is going to be the integral from 22 to infinity. Uh, 1 over 10 e negative x over 10 dx, which is equal to... Uh, negative e, negative x over 10, ranging from 22 to infinity. And we plug in infinity at the upper end point, and that's going to get a 0. So in the end, we get e negative 2.2. That's one way to do it. And the other way to do it is to say that this is equal to 1 minus the probability that t is less than 22 and compute that probability. And the probability that t is less than 22 is, well, you're going to discover in the end. Go ahead and compute it yourself, but this is going to be 1 minus e negative 2.2. That's another way you could possibly do it. All right. But in the end, uh, this is the answer. Okay. Uh, and, and also a sketch. It's good to have these sketches. 
of what we're computing. We are computing the area underneath. Oh, no, I don't want that. That's not that I can make a better sketch than that. We want the area underneath the curve. Here's 22. Uh, the area to the underneath the curve to the right of 22. And that area tails off to infinity. Okay, uh, here is some R code that's doing this stuff. Uh, I did integrate from negative infinity to 20 uh, to start, and uh, I integrated. Oh, I had to give it a rate parameter. This is a pr this is the parameter of dexp that we need to set to change the mean. And in this case, uh, it's the rate parameter, which is one divided by the mean. So the mean is 10, so the rate will be 1 over 10. So this is the first integral. I could have done 0 instead, and I think I probably would have gotten more numerical accuracy if I had. Uh, but we, but R does allow us to plug in infinity. You'll probably just get more error if you do. Uh, and uh, here is the integral from 6 to 9, and here is one from 22 to infinity. Um, and it's and it's also got a fairly large error so okay so uh, that's that for this uh, section uh, the next section will talk about cdfs and expected values for continuous random variables so i will see you there